Hi and welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining me on this episode where I go through the planning and start building the Fisher Youngster Fin. I make some tools up which will help me with that and hopefully you will get a few hints and tips. Remember, this is my way of doing things, it is not the only way. So let's get cracking and join me in the video. Hi and uh, welcome to the fin build. As you can see I've put some blocks already out on the bench and I've attached the rear spar to the block work ensuring that it is vertical that way. The end, this end here has been squared off so it's vertical in both directions as required. Uh, I've made up this uh, top reinforcing piece which uh, goes against the very top rib uh, to make up a T section. Uh, if I show you, hopefully you'll see over here, uh, it sort of shows a, a uh, out of scale cross section there. Uh, the cross section is far more accurate on drawing two there. Uh, there's a slight anomaly in drawings. In point of fact, there's a few with the fin. Uh, the way the uh, triangular blocks are put in is different. And when it comes to the rudder, there's some other differences, but I'll talk about the rudder later on. But yes, the, the, the way the blocks are set up are shown differently on drawing two to the, that on drawing two A. You get a piece of uh, three quarter block, as it says should be used. Three quarter block wood not come all the way across to their blocking point because that's one inch uh, so it's going to be smaller or I could make it a gapped block so that there's a small gap in the corner uh, there's, a, there's a secondary issue with the blocking on the leading edge uh, the, the uh, rib itself is uh, 30 millimeters across from here to here and uh, I've drawn in here where the gusset would go it's 11 millimeters from the center line so 22 millimeters wide and uh, three quarter inch block is about 19 mil so I mean I have a millimeter gap between the block and the gusset and that's with me doing a recessed gusset so you'd have uh, close to two and a half three mil uh, gap if you're doing surface gussets. Uh, for a gusset to work correctly it, uh, it passes the loads going through the components by making the joint take shear load and to do that it needs to have contact so I want to make my blocks a little bit wider there's no material supplied that's uh, wider in that direction so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a piece of the trailing edge uh, of the elevator laminate that I've got left over onto the sides of this three quarter inch uh, material uh, and I think it's H F9, F9 material um, and uh, to make it a little bit thicker and then when I run the router uh, going across to make the joint that will uh, give us something as sacrificial to, to actually produce uh, the tapered requirement for there. Uh, before I actually carry on with the leading edge, I'm going to be marking a centre line and I'm going to put this through on the table saw uh, with an angle that's going to take off approximately eight 8.6 degrees or as close as I can get to 8.6 degrees off each side of the, uh, the leading edge and that will make life an awful lot easier uh, because the ribs 
uh, I did the sort of calculation 8.5 8.6 degrees um, here is, is that angle so we've got that on each side it makes it a lot easier than trying to plane it uh, to match up and to do sort of routing and bits and pieces later so by cutting that I can then do the round off for the very front end slightly differently you'll also notice that I've put in uh, an extra bit of a line here and that is to allow for the fact that the distance from here to there uh, is greater when you're talking about the angle I've actually measured the distances from there to there uh, and transferred that onto the drawing so a slight modification there to the to the shape it's not going to change the rib it's just for me to have a, an idea on uh, the actual way I'm going to deal with everything at the front end here and the top rib of the fin going across here goes to the very front of the uh, the fin itself so that I will, I will cut to that angle so say to that line and then it'll be chamfered back and it'll probably come back to about there as it goes up the uh, so that's uh, the one there and looking at the drawing on the rudder uh, they've got that rib there extending further forward on drawing 2a uh, so it's drawn slightly differently to this so I'm in two minds as whether I'm going to cut the rib off short and have the laminate come down past um, or whether I'm going to cut the laminate and have the rib come out underneath it I think I'll probably go this method because it'd be easier I can do all the rounding then with the routing just cut off the excess in a similar way to the way I did the uh, ends of the elevator so these are the planning stages time taken at this point will save an awful lot of effort later so uh, the block here is to help support the, the uh, rib that's going into here okay so made up a couple of tools I've made up a rib template uh, this can go onto the rib material this side here will act as the center line so I can mark it that way flip it over mark the other side so this matches the uh, shape as on drawing two this line here lines up with where it would meet up with the leading edge and this is a continuation for the top rib of the fin so I can uh, mark that out and draw it or the bottom of the rudder if I go all the way forward as we discussed earlier the other tool I've made up is this center finder really really simple uh, all I've done is I've uh, marked out equally at 30 millimeter spacings along a section of wood here I've drilled these holes all the way through at two millimeters to take the nails which I've taken the uh, the ends off so that they're rounded and won't cause any damage and then I drilled at the back here 3.5 millimeters almost all the way through so I've still got just a, a two millimeter hole there and the idea is you can fit that onto the onto the uh, piece of wood put your pencil in twist it so that the uh, the nails are equally on each side and run the pencil along and there you have a center line and it's dead center uh, I'll do that for the uh, the ribs as well uh, and that way I can make sure that when I mount this because it's not going to be flat against the bench I can have it set to exactly the right height so that it meets up with the center line of the rib and that's uh, my way of making sure everything is correctly lined up Just going to mark up the top rib so that's my end point I will just put a mark a little bit further back there which is the datum on the template Just use a couple of 
for my small clamps. Just to hold that in position. over so we've got the datum in position draw around and there we have the rib shape drawn on which I can uh, now cut out I'll just cut across and I'll use a sander just to sand that round So here is the uh, rib rounded off, centre line was marked uh, as you saw but I've also marked in this line above which is to allow for the thickness of this reinforcing piece and so that will sit there on the rib. I'll glue that in place before we uh, start the assembly it's going to be a lot easier to try and glue that now make sure everything's all at 90 degrees and I'll even glue in perhaps the extra little bits and uh, the, the side blocks in while I've uh, while I've got it in position like this at this moment in time okay prep work just about done the top rib I marked out and shaped and we glued the reinforcing piece on the uh, F47 to give it that T-shape. I've made up blocks at the right angles to fill in the uh, corner pieces and uh, had to cut those down so that they'd fit in here. They'll get finished sanded to be flush with the bottom of the rib so that it sits correctly on the bench. Uh, little infill pieces put in at each end as is my want I don't like having gaps uh, next piece that's been done uh, for the front blocks which I've yet to cut I've uh, bonded on the uh, piece of laminating strip onto the uh, square section to give it that little bit of depth so we've got something to take off and it meets up with the gussets as discussed earlier and the leading edge centre line marked uh, it's gone through on my table saw. I cut it down about two thirds of the uh, height. Leave saw marks. So I then set up the uh, sanding station with an eight and a half degree uh, angle on there and finished it off so it's nearly to the, the bottom there. There's still a little bit of material left, but not a lot. Uh, so that that is now correctly tapered to fit into position. Those of you who might be wondering what uh, these are, that you might have seen them on my workbench uh, in previous uh, episodes. These are my glue testing uh, system. Uh, it's based on an old method uh, where you glue it up like this. The two uh, legs at the bottom there will be sanded flat and then it will be destructively tested in a vise. In days of old we used to have to make up three of those, one we'd test ourselves and two for an inspector to test. Uh, it's just an old habit, I like to check uh, each glue batch on any of the structural glue to make sure that it is uh, cured correctly and has its strength. So uh, that concludes uh, this episode, in the next episode we will get all the ribs made, the blocks made and this basic structure uh, glued up. Uh, we might even get as far as fitting gussets. So until then, look after yourselves. Bye now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.